Chef Doug B. Welcome to another edition of Dish It Out. We're here at the beautiful facilities at Mercer County Community College, our culinary center here. And my special guest today is Chef Aaron Phillipson from the Blue Bottle. Welcome, Chef. Thank you very much. And along with Chef is one of our grads from our program, Justin Kaplan, who graduated from not only our uh, program here, associate's degree, you got your FDU uh, bachelor's. That's correct. Hotel restaurant management. Yes, sir. And you got that right here on our campus, right? Yes, I did. Without even going up there. So uh, it's, it's a great way. You can actually earn a bachelor's right here on campus, which is kind of cool. Mm -hmm. So uh, now you've been at the Blue Bottle. When did you open? Uh, we opened in March of 06. Okay, and yeah. I hear you have a uh, outstanding pastry chef. Oh yes, we do. That's my wife, Rory Phillipson, and uh, yeah, the two of us own it together and do a lot of the cooking as well. Very good. Remember, it? you owe me ten bucks for that plug for your wife, so oh, you don't yeah, get in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> so, what are we going to cook today, chef? Uh, today I have a uh, ancho and cardamom dusted scallops, um, uh, Spanish rice, and a uh, sofrito as a sauce. It's a Spanish sauce with tomato, onion, and pepper pureed up. Okay, so where do we start? Uh, I'm going to start off with the rice. I'm going to add some uh, vegetable oil, about two tablespoons. I'm going to saute some finely diced fennel and onion. Just going to sweat it up. Yes, our pan is hot enough. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, we're sweating. We're just going to pull some of the, the flavor out of that, let it tender, tenderize a little bit. Yes. Okay. And then I'm going to add the rice to coat it with the oil. And we, why do we choose bismonte rice? It's uh, I like the flavor better. I like uh, with this dish. I like to use a long grain rice, and the basmati rice has a very distinct flavor, a nice nutty flavor to it that I uh, prefer. Okay. All right. And we we give that we saute that off a little bit with yeah, the, just uh, to the coat yeah, just to coat it with the oil so to help it from running from sticking. And then I'm going to add some a uh, couple sprigs of thyme that I just take off the. Okay. All right, so uh, one bay leaf. Not two, one. Yeah, just one. Okay. And uh, about a half a teaspoon of saffron thread. Oh, the nice stuff. Yeah. Saffron's a little on the pricey side. Oh, definitely. But well worth it. You get a great flavor and, and great color from that. Yes. And then here I have, uh, I have some water. You can use broth, a chicken broth, but I prefer water in this to keep it nice uh, neutral. Okay. A little uh, black pepper, some salt. And I'm going to let this come up to a simmer. And as soon as it comes up to a simmer, I'm going to just put a top on it and let it cook away. Okay. About how long does that take? Uh, about 10 to 15 minutes or is just until all the liquid is absorbed. Um, the ratio for the rice to the liquid is uh, one and a half to one, one and a half for the liquid uh, to one times the uh, rice. Right, and depending on the type of rice you're gonna use, that ratio can vary a little bit. Yes, yes, with this rice I do one and a half to one. Beautiful. All right, it's just starting to simmer, so I'm gonna put a top on it. Okay. Uh, we're gonna start the sofrito, which is uh, basically a Spanish tomato sauce, and uh, with uh, sauteed onions, garlic, pepper, uh, pimenton, or, um, Paprika, Spanish paprika. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me, and the uh, tomato. I for this I use uh, some crushed canned tomato, but if in the summer it definitely would be great to use uh, local tomatoes. Right, use what's in season. Yeah. But uh, on, on on the uh, flip side, though, on the uh, the canned items, you do have consistency in your product. At oh, least. definitely. Yeah, they always oh. use the ripest tomatoes to can, so you know you're always going to get the, the same product. I'm going to add the onion and the garlic. Okay. It's about one onion and five cloves of garlic, sliced up. You can tell when you're working with a chef, we're not talking about teaspoons or half cups of this, that, and the other thing. We're talking whole product here. Oh, yeah. It takes about two or three minutes. I'm just sweating them down. If, if it gets a little color, that's okay, because it takes out the sweetness from the onion and the garlic. That's fine. And then I will add the peppers. It's a half a red pepper and uh half of a poblano pepper to add a little spice. Ah, uh, that's a little heat, okay. Yeah. Now if, I've, if I'm at very delicate flavors, which I do, and I'm afraid of that hot spicy stuff, I can alter it and, and Alt sort of Yeah, you can use a green bell pepper. There we go. It'll be fine, yeah. It'll be sweet just like me. Tate for a little while, I'm gonna add the paprika. It's about uh, one tablespoon. Okay. 
a nice color. Oh, definitely. And some flavor. You can smell oh, the, yeah. the, the, the essence of that coming right up out of the pan. Yeah. The... And there we see we're getting a nice color. So if we did heat up our pan a little too much, which happens. Yeah. Um, yeah, you can add a little water to, t <coughs> to keep the onions and uh, peppers from burning. Or a little broth. But now these have sweated nicely. The uh, paprika has uh, mixed in with the oil because it's an oil soluble spice. Right. Which is why you would add it in with the oil instead of after the liquid. I'm going to add the tom crushed tomatoes. It's about five crushed tomatoes or one small can. Okay. All right. All right, now we just let that simmer about 10 minutes to uh, infuse all the flavors, and then we're going to uh, throw this in the, the Roboku and blend it up. Uh, you could use a blender. I don't, I'm not looking for something that's a super fine puree. Okay. So it does still have some texture to right. it. Right. I'll add this into the Roboku. How many servings would we have here about? Uh, this would probably be for about four of the sauce. And the mm -hmm. rice, I did enough for about four people. OK. All right, I need Perfect. The top. All right. And then with this, I just like to pulse it. Because if you leave it this way, you can watch to make sure how uh, pureed it is getting. So can we put our pan on? Yeah, and I want to get the pan nice and hot for the scallops to sear in all the flavor. A lot of times people won't uh, saute the scallops at a high enough heat, so uh, they, uh, they leach their liquid. And this way, if you have a, a pan hot enough, and I'm going to add the oil, and then as soon as the oil just lights, lightly smokes, that is when it will be ready to add the scallops, and you cannot overcrowd the pan as well, or they will steam instead of saute. Right. Okay, we're seasoning our scallops. With a little salt it's not a and secret. pepper. Just have a robo here. <laughs> right, salt and pepper, and what else are we throw? And this on is here? the ancho cardamom rub. It is uh, ground dried anchos, uh, cardamom, uh, coriander, a little fennel seed. I just, I'm just going to do it on one side, nice. I should add this hot. Anyway, when you add the scallops, that's what you are looking to hear is that nice sizzle, because if you don't, they'll steam. Right, we want that nice crisp sear as opposed to that moist simmer. Yes. Okay. And what size we have? Uh, These are uh, U10 sca sea scallops. Um, you could use bay scallops for this, which would be much smaller. Um, I really prefer the uh, sea scallops for their size. Mm -hmm. And this way, I, I like to cook them mid-rare inside so that they still have a little opaque in the middle. And it just... I like the sweetness of these two. Yes. And less of them you have to turn over as your cereum, as opposed to the base scallop, you're just kind of tossing them a little more. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's that. Yeah, that's a nice, beautiful color. Yeah, it's a, it's a dark brown, but it's not burnt. I mean, it's something that you, uh, you do want to be careful for, so I sear the first side a little less than I do the other side because of the spice mix. Mm -hmm. And if you burn, the, if the spice mix gets too dark, it'll burn it and make you get bitter flavors. Right. Leave them alone and let them caramelize. By caramelize, we're getting flavors that we can't get any other way. Yes, definitely. That Maillard effect. And as soon as you finish, uh, the scallops finish cooking most of the way through. Yes. Right, we don't want, don't want them well done and dried out. Uh, oh, no. We'll do our plate up. Yes, sounds good. Okay. So now we're all ready for our plate up here. Where yes, do we start? Yes, yes. I'm going to start with the Spanish rice. I have a ring mold here in the center of the plate. I'm just going to fill the ring mold about halfway. All right. Take that off. Um, now I'm going to place the scallops. Around nice, the rice. Nice color contrast there. And then I have the sofrito, which I had, uh, before I sauteed a little halved cherry tomatoes and a little hominy, and I added it in. And with all the dried spices and everything, just uh, the, the, the fragrance wafting off of this, it smells wonderful. Oh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's full of bold flavors, but it goes, uh, the scallops hold up to it nicely. And I have a little uh, chopped fennel and parsley, uh, fennel fronds, just gonna, and cilantro in the middle. All right. And there you have it.
And then we have our pan sear scallops. Yes, with uh, Spanish rice and uh, sofrito. Wonderful. Looks delicious, Chef. Thanks. Something like this and more, you can go to the Blue Bottle. Yes. Located in? in? Hopewell, New Jersey. All right. Thank and you very the, much. Um, and of course, come in for, for dinner. You know, we get a real nice dinner and, and not oh, putting yeah. on the spot and, and you know, it's, it's all comped, right? Oh, sure. No, sure. no, no. Everybody <laughs> pays, but it's all well worth it. So thanks again, Chef, for joining thank us Thank you today. very much. Justin, thank you. Thank you, Chef. Hi, I'm Doug Fee, coordinator of the hospitality programs here at Mercer County Community College. And I'd like to invite you down to the Culinary Center here at Mercer County College where you can enjoy great facilities and expand your culinary horizons. You can do that in a number of ways. We offer many one session and series classes on how to cook. Whether it's basic or advanced, we have classes for you. You get to come and play and cook and best of all, you don't have to do the dishes. Learn real authentic cuisine such as international cuisine from chefs who learn their trade there. So come see us, check us out at mccc.com edu slash hrim and see all that we have to offer. You'll be glad you did and I hope to see you there. Visit literacy.gov and let the journey begin. Hi, welcome back to Dish It Out here at the beautiful facilities at Mercer County Community College Culinary Center. And I'm here with restaurateur. Oh, thank you. Bill Byers, who is currently the chef at the YWCA Nursery School, where you do a lot of work with kids there. Yes, we do. Yes, we do there. It's very nice to do stuff like here. But we're here today, and we're going to make a veal chop. Now, the veal chop we're making today is something we've done with our, in our student-run restaurant, which Bill actually volunteers for. Yes, I do. I, and we're open, what, Wednesdays we're doing that class on Wednesdays. And, and it varies from semester to semester. It does. It does. And, uh, but Bill comes to play and, and, and helps share all his knowledge with our students, which we appreciate. And today, you're going to share one of these dishes with yeah, all of us. This is one of the dishes that they were doing this in this semester here. And it's a, uh, it's a what? What do we got here? A, we have a... Veal chop. A veal and chop. We're going to make a nice glaze for this. Right, and it's the glaze starts off with veal stock, and we have some veal stock, and it's 50/50. It's veal stock, and ready for this root beer, if you can believe that. So it's portions, you know, a can of soda. So it's 16 ounces of, of uh, root beer and 16 ounces of veal stock, and you put that on the stove once you start your dish, and you put it on the stove and let it reduce almost to until it becomes a serious syrup consistency. So we'll leave that just like that and put that on our stove and put it away. Let it go for about a half hour or 45 minutes. But keep an eye on it because when you make a glaze, when you reduce something down like that, it's like garlic toast. Yeah. You, know, you turn your back for the wrong 30 seconds and it's lost and you start all over. And uh, absolutely. And then it goes and it's burnt. And it's, but you just want a syrup consistency out of it, all the moisture out of it. Then we're going to go into a, another thing that we put in the back of the stove, caramelized onions. And caramelized onions are very easy to make. You slice an onion very thin or thin like we have here. We put a little olive oil in the, in the pan, a little butter, and again, you just let that go nice and slow on your stove until they start turning brown, and it, it, that's where it develops its flavor. It right, really does. Nice sweetness. It really, yeah, it does. So we'll let that. So we've got two things on the flame at, at, at once now and reducing our veal stock and soda, and we've got our onions that are going to start to caramelize on the back of our stove. Okay. All right. Then so we put these on the back of the stove. Yeah, we could do that if you want. We've and got a stove over here. While this is going on the back of the stove, we get to play with our veal chop. Yeah, well, yeah, veal chop. And you go to the, your butcher and get a veal chop. It's just a nice veal chop here. It's about, I don't know, uh, eight, eight to ten ounce veal chop, natured veal chop. It's beautiful. It's Frenched out. And uh, we're going to season that. And what we're going to season that with is a Creole seasoning. Uh, any dried herb mix that you like, you could use. I mean, for me, as, as I said earlier, I have a very, very sensitive taste bud. So uh, if, if I bought say, a, a jerk mix or any kind of seasoning like that, Cajun mix, I would lighten it up a little bit by adding some you know, dried parsley or marjoram or something in there. Right. So not as much bite. But with, with this recipe, you can add a fair amount of bite because of our glaze and our, our onions. Right. But the goal we're, we're, we're trying to get here is a sweet 
from the, the uh, soda pop or the, the root beer and the hot from the Cajun spe spices that we're going to have. So we're going to work a little hot and sweet. And so our, our, our spices that we put in ours is a little garlic powder, a little onion powder, some oregano and dried thyme, some black pepper. You can use fresh or ground. Some cayenne pepper. You know, again, that's a lot of cayenne pepper. You may want to go half, because you can always add more. You can, you know, once it's in there, it's tough to take it out. Some salt. And, oh, look at that. It's all dry. A little up. humid. A little humid, I'd say. And some paprika. And what you do is just mix that up. And you can make a whole boatload of this up if you want to. And uh, make it up and put it in. Oh, thanks, Doug. You could put For that. You anything, though. <laughs> You could put that in a Ziploc bag and save it for a while. And you know, a piece of fish, a piece of chicken, you can put that on just as well and grill it off. Of course, but you want to put aside what you don't need before you start throwing course, raw meat around in there. Of course, of course, of course, of course. But then once you have that all like that, you want to get your veal chop like so. And you want to season it. So you take a little uh, seasoning, sprinkle it on the bottom, sprinkle it on top, and again, you don't want to get too crazy with it, but a nice, nice coating on the veal chop. Once you get that all seasoned like so, I like to put a little olive oil on it like that and rub that in because there's very little fat on your veal chop. So when you go to grill it, it won't stick. So we've got that. We're going to go grill this over here okay. on our grill. Right, so we've got our veal chop and we've olive oiled, oiled up our veal chop like so. We've got a clean grill, very hot, and we're going to sear that like that. All right, so we're going to let that go for a little bit, like so. Now, how are we going to get grill marks on here? Well, you, how, you, you just let that grow on that, that angle, and then we're going to turn it. So we've got the grill going like this, and then you're just going to completely turn it the opposite way, just like that. So that's the secret. That's the secret. Don't play with your meat. Just let it sit for a while and get a nice color. You can continue cooking this all the way through on your grill, or you can take it out and put it in a pan like so, or a sizzle pan, once you've got your grill marks. Look at that, that's pretty, uh, And stuff really that, fun. stuff that right in your oven. Like so. And we're gonna cook that to a temperature, an internal temperature about 145. That's medium, right, would you right. get that? Right, medium so it's not overdone and it's still right. nice and moist. And that, should, that, that size veal chop, it's a 8 ounce to 10 ounce veal chop. It should take about 8 minutes, 9 minutes in, in, the, uh, in the oven, about 475. So okay. we're looking to do that. So that's going to finish off in the oven while our, our glaze is reducing. So we've got our caramelized onions going real nice there. And you can see they're nice and caramelized and, and beautiful like that. And our sauce. Of course, the more you caramelize these, the sweeter it's going to be. Right. And our reduction, a half hour, 45 minutes, it's going to come into that. And at this point, you've got your uh, veal stock and your soda pop, so it's real sweet. You can add a dab of butter if you wanted to to that to make it nice and shiny. Add a little richness to it. Get that in real nice. And bring that around. Now, if you add a little butter to it, you just got to watch your heat. If it gets too hot, it's your gonna grease is going to separate and have a greasy mess, which you, you don't. Can learn, yeah, you can learn that here if you come here, right? How not to do that, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so you got your sauce. So you got your caramelized sauce here right now. Your sauce, all nice. Your caramelized onions. And you're going to say, uh, what are you going to serve with that? And I like to make uh, a mashed potatoes. They make mashed potatoes here. But I like to make roasted garlic with it. And we make a moist roasted garlic mashed potatoes. And, and roasted we, garlic is made how? Uh, I take a, a clove of garlic and I stuck it in a, a aluminum foil with a little salt and pepper and olive oil and I stuck it in there and roasted it for about a half hour or so until it gets, gets nice and soft. And I pull it out and let it sit. It's all caramelized. You can see the uh, caramelization of it. Oh, that's really beautiful. nice. And then I take, make regular mashed potatoes, maybe mom's or your own. And you, once you mix it all together, you add your nice roasted garlic pieces, smush them right out, and put them right in your mashed potatoes. And you know, roast, roasted garlic. OK, so everything's ready now. We're ready to plate up. How are we going to do it? Right, so you've got your garlic mashed potatoes right here that we have made. Put a nice little scoop, like so. Not too much. We have our veal chop that has been oh, that's roasted beautiful. or on the grill. We can finish it. Put that like so. We have our caramelized onions. 
and we can decorate oh. that plate real nice like so. That's looking nice. And then we have our finished sauce, nice and syrupy. And we can just, and you can see how nice that ends up. And you can just trickle just a little bit right over the mashed potatoes. And remember, now, so you have your hot and your sweet and your garlic. And for a garnish, you've got maybe a little uh, roasted garlic clove left over. You can plant it like so. And it's a nice little garnish of thyme. And nice and simple and clean. But you have your sweet and your hot and your mashed potatoes. What do you wow. think? I think that's beautiful. I think I need a knife and fork. I do too. Oh, it smells good, but it, it looks good. Yeah. It's quite nice. Why not? I think it's a thing. I want to know. How's everybody doing start. tonight? Hello. Chrissy, hey. Hey, Alex. How are you? <laughs> Alex? Oh, Alex? Hey, Alex? Oh, hey, Alex? Oh, hey, Alex? Oh, Alex? Oh, Alex? Oh, hello. <laughs> I'm Mrs. Garcia. We've heard a lot about you. He is cute. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who would love to put up with you. Hey, welcome back to the Culinary Center at Mercer County Community College. We want to show you a little twist on what you can do with a salad just to, to dress it up a little bit, especially if you don't have any really great fresh tomatoes. How do we add a little something? And, and a little protein. A little protein. That works for me. So. All right. Well, start us off, Bill. A little, little pan-seared tuna. That sounds, that sounds wonderful. All right. I, I, how would you pan sear? That's what we're, we're really working on is pan sear. We're going to just use a little salt and pepper to season our fish and a little crushed black pepper. And you can, you know, anything Asian, you could put a little sesame seeds with this. Uh, you can use a little curry spice if you wanted or Cajun spice would go nice too with it. Anything, any, any flavor that you're going for. So we season that up real nice. We get our pan on. Our pan is good and hot. Smoking nice. hot. Yeah. We want that, right? Yeah, you want that. I like to put my pan on and let it, it's like when you wash your face at night, you just put the hot, steamy, warm water on and it opens all your pores in your face. Same thing in the pan. It opens all the pores in the pan and you hit it with some oil, like the soap in your face, and you start washing it out and it colors all the holes. And then you drop your, sear your tuna in, like so. And you, how long do you think that it's going to take? How long do you want to wait? Well, we just want to give it a little color on each side. Right. We, want to, we don't want to cook it through. We don't have a dry protein on our salad, so we, we want it to be medium rare at most. Yeah, I, I like to put the, this is a Teflon pan. I like to put a little oil in it. I think it crisps the fish up a little nice, too. And you can see, it, we're not, they're not hanging out very long in the pan, either. And we're going to just turn that over, and you can see your color in your pan already, in your fish right now. And a nice, crisp texture. Right. It's nice, though. How long? About a minute, that was, if that? About that. And if you're doing this at home with this much oil, you might want to unplug your smoke alarm before you get started. We've, done all, we've all done that once or twice, I'm sure. Right. And at all sides, you just keep turning the fish. All right. Now, this particular salad that we're making today, we did a white balsamic vinaigrette. And we just, uh, standard ratio, three to one. Three parts oil, the one part vinegar, and we had a little uh, shredded basil in there. A it's a basic vinaigrette, exactly. You can go Asian with it. You could put a little uh, sesame seed oil or the rice wine vinegar instead. There's a lot of variations on a vinaigrette. But once this is done, about a minute on each side, what I like to do is take a piece of saran wrap and wrap it. And you can see here how I wrap the fish all up in the saran wrap, and it keeps the keeps its shape. It keeps its nice nice uh, shape and stuff like that. And you can refrigerate that a day you know, or two, and it's, it's right in the refrigerator, ready to go. I like to dress my salad if you want to dress that salad, Doug, and right. any type of greens. What kind of greens do we have there? Uh, just a mixed greens, bag yeah. of mixed greens. Right. May I? Thank you. And we want to be careful. We don't want to overdress. We want just enough to coat all the leaves. Oftentimes, if you, if you get a salad out, you can tell when you just go ahead and dump it on there. Too much, too As much. opposed to being dressed. We want just enough to coat the leaves. Uh, this way, don't, we don't want to wash out the flavor of the greens yeah. with too much of our dressing. So just dress. We see a nice coating, a nice light sheen on all of our leaves here, and we're good to go. Now, how much greens do you want? Well, how hungry are you? Right. If you're just doing a salad or an appetizer or something like that, that would be probably a nice portion size right there. All right. And again, you could dress that up. We've got some, you know, nice bell peppers here that we've nice. got. And then once you have that, you've got your tuna. 
and you slice that nice and thin. Right through the saran. Right, right through the saran, right. I'll let that cool enough before you wrap up with the saran that it's not all melted together. Right, and that can wrap up again and go right in your refrigerator. You pull your saran wrap off, your pieces. And you can see the, the kind of nice, nice pink inside, so right. it's not all dried out. And it's not much, just need a little bit. You know, if you're having guests over and you want to impress them with something a little different, this is a nice way to do it. You can do it ahead of time, just dress it right before service. And Put you your tune on there. Right. And you're ready to rock. I think that's pretty nice. Pan seared tuna with a nice vinaigrette. If you'd like to learn more, like you've just seen us do here, join us here at the Culinary Center at Mercer County Community College. To see what classes we have to offer, look for us on the web at www.mccc.edu slash hrim. And click on our Culinary Center tab to see what's going on here. We have beautiful facilities. We'd love to have you down in our kitchen, so please join us. Thanks for being with us here again today. And thank you, Bill. Anytime, Doug. You're unique. So are we at Mercer County Community College. Over 60 majors to choose from. Discover your unique path. And turn your passion into a career. Small classes and enthusiastic professors. Follow your unique path here at Mercer County Community. Welcome to another edition of Ask Frank, where your culinary tips are brought to you at home. Also, you can email us a question and we can answer it on the air to you. As a matter of fact, this question today comes from Estelle from Mercer, so thanks for writing in Estelle. Her question is, what's the best way to season cast iron? We have a small cast iron skillet pan here, and I'm going to demonstrate the best way. The uh, best way that I was always taught is just put a small amount of oil uh, usually you're going to want to use some type of mild vegetable. It doesn't need much. You just want a thin layer. And the best way I was shown is, you know, use some clean hands and just go ahead and rub that oil into the pan. You just want a nice thin layer. You don't want it to be too shiny. You don't want it to build up too much. But you want it to nice, even, light coat on that pan. And then what you're going to do after you get that rubbed into the pan, it's almost like giving cast iron a massage here. Doesn't seem to say thank you though. But nonetheless, it'll thank us when we cook something on it. Say like a nice piece of seared swordfish. Okay, so after I have a nice thin layer rubbed into that pan, I'm gonna go ahead and turn that pan over on, in this case, a towel or a newspaper. And I'll let that sit probably for maybe two or three days even. And um, sometimes you'll even put it in an oven that has a pilot light on there and let that pan really get seasoned. And then after two or three days, you'll check it, you'll make sure there's no shiny spots. And as long as that nice thin layer is there, you'll go ahead and put it in the oven at about 500 degrees. And you'll let it sit for maybe an hour or so. And what that'll do is it'll form a nice seasoned pan for you. So you won't get any type of metallic taste when you use your cast iron. And mo most importantly, in addition to that taste, you also won't have a rusty pan later on. So for more culinary tidbits like this, why don't you come and join us for a credit or a non-credit course here at the Mercer Culinary Center. We'd love to have you. Or if you have a question from home, send us an email at feed at mccc3cs.edu and we'll answer the question on the air if it's chosen. We hope to see you for a class soon. And remember, don't ask your neighbor, ask Frank. <laughs>